hidden treasure. Inside, a model inspired by the past but constructed for the future. This main column piece uh, we could probably do in, I want to say, about 40 hours. A symbol of what's at risk far from here in the Syrian desert at Palmyra. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site, an ancient city which once stood at the crossroads of several civilizations. The first century architecture prized for Greek, Roman and Persian influences. One year ago, we came here with Syrian and Russian forces, saw for ourselves the monuments, threatened and some damaged by fanatical ISIS fighters. We recorded the status of Palmyra as of early May 2016. A temple destroyed, a victory art shattered, but much of Palmyra still intact, including the tetrapylons, a set of four, four-column structures which marked an intersection. Today, according to satellite photographs, two of the tetrapylons are completely destroyed, gone forever. As ISIS invaded Syria, they took the town of Palmyra, murdered its chief archaeologist, and destroyed many of the buildings in a UNESCO heritage site. And you'll have the opportunity to step over to the model and see it up close. Brian Merkley runs Creative Commons, a nonprofit organization devoted to sharing creative content on the internet. He and hashtag New Palmyra decided to bring back parts of the ruins using 3D modeling. Over hundreds of hours, they helped create a new tetrapylon using a 3D printing company out of Texas. A model made of plastic, not stone, smaller and lighter than the original, not archaeologically exact, a reproduction. It is a new Palmyra and it's telling new stories on top of the old one. Um, so I think that's incredibly powerful and it's not the way we think about heritage. We usually focus on recreating or replicating it flawlessly. We don't think of it as something that, is, that also belongs to us, that we can remix and build upon. This model was in part designed from photographic 3D imaging, taken by Syrian Basil Kartabil as far back as 2005. Kartabil, a software developer, pried open the internet in his home country, arguing for free open content. He was a blogging pioneer until open access became a threat. We don't know where he is. John and Phillips, a friend, last saw him in 2011. So he was a very well-known person in the government and also in the community and technology communities. So yes, he was known. And, and many times I, I, I've heard him, he was given um, options. Do you want to work on this project or do you want to go to jail? In 2012, Cartable was scooped up in Damascus and thrown in jail. The Free Basel movement has been pressing for his release, but in the last two years, they've heard nothing from him, nothing about him. They fear he might be dead. So open knowledge is political, and for some people it's dangerous. And just seeing it here and having worked on it for five months with these, uh, these folks to bring it to life, it's, uh, it's an emotional moment. Palmyra has become a powerful symbol at the center of a seesaw battle for control. In May 2015, ISIS first overran the desert town. Syrian Russian forces recaptured it in March 2016, celebrating with a concert earning praise for saving Palmyra, only to lose it again nine months later as ISIS battled back in December 2016. Destruction began again. Modeling the monuments keeps the past accessible, according to Barry Thru, director of Hashtag New Palmyra. The power of this digital reproduction is that, you know, the, the people that want to control the cultural identity of the region can't control um, what's online, what's free, what's shared. Um, and so by sharing this cultural heritage as widely as possible and with as many as pe people as possible, um, it allows a, a, a sense of hope. Palmyra is a strategic and cultural battlefield, deeply vulnerable still. Susan Ormiston, CBC News, Toronto.